Oh, hey. I didn't see you there. Yes, it's deadly as catch, but don't go anywhere. I promise if you keep watching, you're gonna learn something, so let's head upstairs. All right, so you know a little bit of a secret of mine, and that is I enjoy Deadliest Catch. If it's on TV and I'm scrolling through looking for something, I'm probably gonna watch it. But as I watch, there's something also terrifying about it, and I think that it's the ocean for me. We've got these huge waves. You have ice that is freezing on the decks of the ships, which makes it extremely dangerous to work in. And you have crazy weather that just looks miserable. And all of those things would be terrifying for me. Now, I was listening to a talk this week, and in the talk, the gentleman quoted, a ship in harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are made for. And I started thinking about that for my own life, and started thinking about how that might apply to all of our lives. And so today, I want to talk about how deadliest catch and boats in general, like this, can help us become better. But in order for us to get to that conversation, there's one thing we need to learn about boats. Boats use something called buoyancy to float. And basically what buoyancy means is that the boat is less dense than the water around it. And because it's less dense, it then floats. What happens when the boat gains density, it loses buoyancy. And when you push more and more weight down on the boat, eventually it'll sink. So these boats are designed to navigate the ocean waters and to find these crabs. The boat isn't designed to sit on a dock or at a dock and to rust away. They serve a purpose to better its crew and the communities that both the crew and the boat live and work in. The crew goes out to obviously better themselves and to, to bring in a paycheck but they also do it to help the communities that they work in. There are no doubt jobs that are created in Alaska because of the fishermen. And those jobs bring in money and also food in the form of crab or fish. Just as these boats and crew go out to better themselves and their communities, we too need to leave the comfort of our safe harbor in order to better ourselves. As we better ourselves, we better the lives of those that we live with, we work with, and interact with. And when we do that, we improve the communities that we work and serve in as well. Can this be scary? Absolutely it's scary. Stepping outside of your comfort zone is never a comfortable thing. But if we were to question or ask people on the street, would you rather be average or would you rather be great? The vast majority of people are gonna say that they want to be great. And in order for you to be great, you're gonna have to get out of that comfort zone and to develop yourself. Now, while it can be scary, let me share four tips that I believe can help ease some of that scariness. The first step is to have a plan. Have an idea of what you want to develop and then how you're going to develop in that area. These fishermen don't just go out into the middle of the ocean randomly and drop their pods. They have an idea of where they're gonna go and where they're gonna put their lines or their pods. 
Does that mean that every time you go out with a plan that you're going to be successful? Absolutely not. Unfortunately, that's just not how it works. But that's okay, because that brings us to step two, which is to regroup. If you find yourself not being successful in one area, that's okay. Regroup, reevaluate, and identify if you need to change course or change the plan that you currently have. Fishermen don't always catch fish either. They have times that they pull up their lines or they pull up their pods and they're empty. In these situations, they don't pack up their gear and head home right away. They reevaluate their course and find a new area to put their lines in for success. The third step that I would recommend is to be well-rounded. Develop in multiple areas in your life. Just as fishermen don't always go fishing for one specific type of fish. They may have king salmon that they're after, maybe it's king crab, or a variety of other different fish. But whatever you do, remember our principle before about buoyancy. Don't weigh yourself down so much that you begin to sink. Think about your personal buoyancy and make sure that you're balanced so that you're still able to float. Now there are gonna be times that you need some self-care, some self-help, and time for yourself. And that's step four. It's okay to recharge, to re-energize, and to take some time for you. Ships need maintenance, and so do you. As you work to develop yourself, to get outside of the harbor of comfort, if you will, you'll find that by developing yourself, not only will help you, but it'll help your families. It'll help those that you work with. It'll help the communities. And when you're able to do that, you're able to have an impact and you're able to make positive change. Appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me for a little bit. That's it for this episode. We'll see you next time.